So for the first Mind Melt in this series, I want to talk about drone technology, which has become the object of our time, I think. In the last few years, we've seen drones become ubiquitous. They're all over the high street. You can buy drones that are about the cost of a laptop that fly incredibly far, incredibly high and have incredible powers just to occupy the world in ways that we've not been able to before. Helicopters, aeroplanes, balloons have not been able to get to these places and give us the kind of control that we have when operating these mini flying machines. And so I think it's partly because of this freedom that the drone has become such an appealing and, and desirable object. But of course, it's also an object that's imbued with values of destruction and, and, and surveillance and the history of the drone technology, the still present day history of, of this technology is deeply rooted within militaristic apl applications. And so when we engage with this, we're also aware that we sort of participate in this transaction between peace, freedom, and also oppression. And so when I think about the future of the drone, imagine companies like Amazon experimenting with drones in the sky that allow us to deliver objects like blood or organs to people in great need. These incredibly exciting possibilities rub up against this concern that in fact we're also creating and endorsing a world in which we accept the oppression of people through these means. And it's the philosopher Peter Singer that had particular concerns about the idea that drones and other such machines could take decisions for us without our involvement at all, especially when they become decisions about the destruction of life. I felt that we have a obligation and moral commitment to actually not allowing this sort of society to emerge. We need to be present in the world. So when I think of people like Katsu, the graffiti drone artist who's flying off his drone into buildings and allowing himself to occupy these places in ways that's perhaps not possible any other, by any other means, I guess I wonder whether in fact something is lost by the absence of the artists within this space, whether we should be wholly endorsing a world in which the object allows us to be absent. And when I think about where this may take us in the future, part of me worries also about the possibility that we become increasingly dependent on the machine to allow us to experience the world. It becomes this kind of mediating force that, uh, that engages us in different ways that are perhaps to our detriment. It was in the film Back to the Future in 2015 when they went back to the future in that time, uh, imagined from the year of 1984 that we saw a dog being walked by a drone. And I think if you, if you kind of want a dog, then maybe you want to take it for walks yourself. But here we have the example of the, the machine deciding to do things that we would think are kind of uniquely human, the things that matter to us. And so if we imagine the possibility of a dog being taken out by a drone and us maybe staying in bed in the warmth, I guess I wonder what it is that really matters to us about our lives. And, and hopefully the drone forces us to think about that a bit more carefully and perhaps design them in a way that allows us to maintain this kind of freedom or even extend the freedom uh, rather than curtail it or limit us in ways that diminish the richness of our lives. <laughs>